So everyone, just so you know, one of my dear yoga teacher friends, my teacher and mentor, was offering some um, videographer suggestions for me. So at some point, I'll figure that out and be implementing it. In the meantime, thank you for your patience with my technology skills or lack thereof. Thank you so much for joining me. I, again, was thinking today about our first responders, my fellow first responders. Um, I've done the job before. It's the hardest job ever. They are so brave. They are so patient. They exist to help us, protect us, make us feel safe. And they are on the front lines every day right now. And um, I just want to thank all of you first responders for what you're doing. Even though it might seem like we don't appreciate you, I know that we all do. Um, and I just hope that we move through this time quickly, safely, and with a lot of love and care. So thank you, first responders. With that all being said, I'd like to make this more of a restorative class. I haven't really decided I might add in some yin, but I'd like for all of you first responders, especially those of you who are not comfortable with yoga, maybe new to yoga, um, I want you to go through a class and come out of it feeling lighter confident, um, less intimidated by the process. And so my goal really here is for you to relax. Relax the mind, relax the body. And maybe this is a class that you can continue to come back to um, day after day if it's making you feel better. So, Go ahead and let's lie down on our backs. I'm going to stay in a seated position. You can set up in Shavasana, corpse pose, by widening the arms and hands, maybe widen the feet and the legs. Shavasana can look many different ways. If you just can't get comfortable on your back, maybe you start on your side. Maybe you bring a bolster, or a blanket, blankets, a pillow, pillows, in under the legs to take the pressure um, out of the lower back. Maybe you bring a blanket over the pelvis, a blanket under the head. Um, if you have an eye pillow or a tissue, something you can put over the eyes to help you relax, um, I suggest using that here. So again, if you were in my studio, you would see that Shavasana looks different for everyone. None of our poses are gonna look the same. Let the fear go here. Let the expectations go, the control, the judgment of yourself. Feel that when you come to my <laughs> now YouTube channel, you're in a safe space. Go ahead and release and soften, close the eyes. Allow the body to relax from the tippy toes to the crown of the head. And wherever you are, start to come to the mat mentally, physically, spiritually and emotionally. As you allow the body to settle, begin to feel the energy around you, absorb that energy. Allow yourself to feel connectedness here. Feel connected with other humans. 
maybe just with me. Allow yourself to feel connected with me. And for a little bit here today, try to leave the day's stresses and worries off of the mat for however long you choose to practice today. Leave it off the mat. Allow the mind to start to focus, to be present and mindful. And maybe begin just by thinking about why you're here. What brought you to the mat? And maybe you're not even on a mat, and that's okay. What brought you to this space, to this place, to this channel, to yoga? Think about that. And maybe use that answer as your intention for your practice. If you're new and you've never set an intention, allow that to be whatever you need it to be. Maybe it's a person you'd like to dedicate your practice to. Maybe it's a prayer or a meditative mantra. Maybe it's just an intention for love and support of our first responders. Find your intention. Continue to come back to the intention. As you go about your practice today, think about what you'll take with you when you leave. Observe the mental body here. Notice the thoughts, images, memories, emotions. What are you feeling in this moment? Allow it to be present. Release attachment to whatever it is. Release judgment. It's okay that the headspace is busy. Let everything be there. And then when you're ready, let it go. Swaha, let it go. Let everything float away. Bring yourself back to the mat mentally, focusing on the body and the breath. Continue to feel the spirit within. And remember here to practice. Love yourself. Love your practice. Love your practice for what it was yesterday. For what it will be tomorrow. More importantly, for what it is right now, what it's giving you, teaching you, showing you, right here in this moment. You can always come back to the breath and to the practice. Begin to observe the physical body in its entirety. Notice, observe the toes, spaces between the toes, tops of the feet, soles of the feet and ankles. Observe the shins, calves, knees, thighs, buttocks, hips and pelvis. Observe the lower back, middle back, upper back, abdomen, ribcage, and chest. Mm -hmm. 
Observe the thumbs, fingers, palms, backs of the hands and wrists, forearms, elbows, upper arms, shoulders, and neck. Observe the entire head, chin, lips, tongue, cheeks, nose, eyes, eyebrows, space between the eyebrows, forehead and crown of the head. Observe the entire physical body. Notice areas that feel strong and open. Notice areas that maybe feel a little weaker, tighter, more tender. Release attachment, release judgment. And then immediately start to send the breath energetically to those more chatty areas in the body. Really picture the breath moving as it enters the mouth, the throat, the lungs. And then send it where it needs to go. Maybe at this point, the breath body begins to deepen. Find that slow and gentle deep breath. What feels good for you in this moment? I like to practice Ujjayi Pranayama, of sealing the lips, slightly constricting the back of the throat. Breathing in and breathing out fully like you're fogging up a mirror in a bathroom. You might hear a slight Darth Vader-like sound. That's okay. Don't be afraid of the noise. Deeply breathe in with each full inhalation and feel the breath. Slowly and gently exhale complete exhalation, letting all the air float out of the body. Feel the breath, inhaling. Feel the breath, exhaling. And continue this for several rounds. Notice maybe how things continue to release and soften and settle a little bit more. Use the breath to release the tension. Use the breath to control the mind. The hands are down by your side. Go ahead and reach the arms overhead. For a moment, just stretch from the tippy toes to the fingertips. And then begin to bend into the left side body, bringing the hands and the feet over to the left. You're gonna make this banana-like pose, crescent moon. Maybe you stay here, maybe you cross, the right foot over the left. Just notice how that feels.
Try to release and soften the body with each full breath. Sometimes challenging, very hard to do, but let go of the tension, release and soften. If the right leg is crossed, go ahead and uncross and pause for a moment. And begin to come back to center. Again, extend the arms overhead. Stretch from the tippy toes to the fingertips. Imagine you have someone pulling the feet, someone pulling the arms away from one another. Really stretch and reach and extend. And then begin to bring the feet over to the right. Also bringing the hands and arms, bend into the right side body. Maybe cross the left leg over the right if you want to go a little deeper. Find your banana pose, your crescent moon pose. And then start to settle the entire body. might find as you're still in these poses that with each full breath the body continues to settle deeper and deeper. Let it go there and find the breath with each pose. If the left leg is crossed, go ahead and cr uncross and pause for a moment. And then begin to bring the hands back through center again, extend from the tippy toes to the fingertips. Find that length in the body. And 
can bring the hands down by the side. Bring the soles of the feet to touch here. Allow the knees to go wide in Supta Baddha Konasana. If it feels good, you can bring pillows or blankets underneath the legs here to support the body in this asana, this pose. Relax the hands. Find the breath, call to mind. An intention here. If this isn't enough for you and you want to go a little deeper, you can cross the legs, opening up more through the hips, the lower body. And if at any point the sensations become too much, come out of the pose. Always feel free to come out of the pose. Maybe take a few deep breaths here. If it feels good to cleanse the body through the breath, deeply inhale through the nose, and on the exhale, blow everything out through the mouth. <sighs> inhale deeply into the nose. Exhale. <sighs> Let it all go. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. <sighs> Through the mouth. Maybe do that two more times. <sighs> and wherever you are, draw the knees back toward one another. Pause here, maybe adjust through the lower back, do a couple of pelvic tilts. And by that I mean just draw the belly button in toward the spine. The bum doesn't even really need to lift off of the floor here. It just feels nice if the back maybe was overarched. It just feels nice to kind of squeeze the muscles here protecting that lower back. And then widen your feet to the width of the mat. Allow the knees to fall in toward one another. Again, relax the hands. And find the breath. Widen the knees and allow the knees to lower over to the left. Maybe as you do this, the gaze goes to the right. 
Inhale, draw the legs through center. Exhale, lower them over to the right. Maybe the head turns. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, lower to the left. Turn the head to the right. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, turn the head to the left. Inhale, come back through center. Lower to the left. Turn the head in the opposite direction. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale to the right. Inhale, come back through center. Draw one leg into the chest. And be sure to do this mindfully. I can already feel it in my lower back here. Maybe keep the knees and the feet wide. Maybe if it's comfortable, bring the toes to touch. You can hold the knees, the shins, behind the thighs. Just pause here for a moment. And then bring the knees together in Apanasana. And go ahead and rock and roll forward couple of times rocking the length of your spine, rocking from the tailbone to the neck, and then come up through a seat into a tabletop position, or really just preparing for a restorative child's pose. So again, that's going to look different for all of us. If you don't have a bolster or blankets or pillows, you're just going to come down onto the mat with the forehead. You can reach the arms forward. You can bring them back toward the feet. You can always bring the knees together and lower down. If you'd like to make it more of a restorative child's pose, you can have that bolster, the pillows, the blankets handy, and just lower down onto the bolster. Find a comfortable position. And just start to settle the body here. Close the eyes. If the head is turned in one direction, don't worry. I will actually cue you to turn the head in the other direction when it's time.
And if you haven't already done so, and the head is turned in one direction, turn the head in the opposite direction. And if the head is turned, bring it back to center. Have a pillow or blankets handy. Even if you need to pause the video, I apologize. I should have told you this. I've kind of changed my mind here. I'm going to use my bolster and just come up onto the bolster. So you can do this on blankets or pillows. Actually, you might not need to sit. Uh, depending on what you're elevated on. Basically, we're going to come back down onto the mat and uh, move into this uh, restorative fish pose. It's kind of like a restorative bridge. So all I'm going to do is lower down and come into this back bend. Maybe the legs start to extend. Maybe you keep the knees bent, even for just a moment. Find whatever works for you. And hands can be down at your side. They can extend overhead. You can find goddess arms here by bringing the hands more into a goal post pose. And again, if at any moment, if this is just too much, just modify the pose. Find what works for you. You all stay in the pose. I'm going to come out for just a moment and adjust what I'm doing here. To me, even yoga teachers need to adjust sometimes because the sensation just becomes too much depending on what we're doing during the day, what exercise we do, even if we're just sitting at a computer. Allow the body to settle here with each breath.
Find some deep breaths. Maybe switch to your Ujjayi Pranayama again. So sealing the lips, slightly constricting the back of the throat. Deeply breathing in and out like you're fogging up a mirror. And again, see how that continues to shift the mind. Notice what happens in the body and the spirit when you come back to the breath. Use the breath, again, to keep the monkey mind from wandering. If the legs are extended, go ahead and bend at the knee, setting the soles of the feet up on the mat. I'm going to start to come out of the pose. If it feels good for you, you can always stay here. For a moment, I'm going to remove my prop. And again, just kind of work through these pelvic tilts. I don't know if it's the weather change, but my lower back has really been bugging me. So I'm going to do a couple of pelvic tilts, drawing that belly button toward the spine. Feel the length. And then pull it in. And then we'll all meet in constructive rest again, bringing the knees to touch. Allow the feet to go wide on the mat. Relax the hands. And then when you're ready, widen the knees and the feet, hips with distance like you're setting up for a bridge pose. And cross the right foot over the left knee here, pausing here. Maybe take the right hand and gently press the thigh away from the upper body. And then if it's available, bring the arms wide to a T. Palms can be up or down, doesn't matter. You can also find goal post arms or make a V with the hands if that feels better. Slightly shift the bum to the right as you allow the legs to lower to the left. Now you can see here that my foot, the sole of my foot, is planted on the floor, the mat, as best as it will be. Try to relax through that left hip, really let it settle here. Maybe take the gaze in the opposite direction if that feels good in the neck. So turn the head over to the right and settle into the pose. With each full breath, allow the body to settle just a little bit deeper and really focus on settling the hips here. Let the hips go. Energetically release all of that tension you're feeling in the lower body.
And if the head is turned, bring it back to neutral, to center, before carefully, slowly moving with intention, uncrossing or untwisting. Let's untwist first and pause here. Maybe again, push that thigh away and then uncross the right foot. When you're ready, bring the left foot over the right knee. And again, maybe press this thigh away. Bring the hands wide to the T. Slightly shift the bum to the left as you allow the body, the legs, to lower to the right. Maybe the gaze goes out toward the left hand, maybe not. And again, the sole of that left foot is planted on the floor or the mat next to you. Try to release and soften through the lower body, letting the hips go. Maybe close your eyes here. Continue to let go, continue to release and soften. The head is turned, bring it back to center. Slowly untwist the body. Pause for a moment. Maintain flexion in that left foot and push the thigh away. When you're ready, uncross the leg. And pause here. Maybe you do windshield wipers with your legs again. Try to move with the breath. And we'll set up in a final inversion. You all know that if you're close to a wall, you can always scooch over to the wall and lift the legs up the wall in Vibrita Parani. Maybe you use blankets, pillows, and slide them under the lower back, the bum, and just lift the legs up to the ceiling. Wherever you are in this pose, Try to find some stillness here. Allow the blood to completely recirculate back through the entire body. And 
we release and soften through the heart space, the head, the neck. And again, don't be afraid to lift higher onto something. I always tell my students that in Viparita Karani, legs up the invisible wall, we really want no engagement here. We really want to be able to settle and relax. So a lot of times I see my students just with backs down on the mat and they're shaking and struggling, holding the core tight. That's not the goal of this pose. A lot of times in yoga, we do this core work by lifting the legs up to the ceiling. But right now, this is a restorative pose. We want to feel, we want our body to feel the benefit of the pose. Allow the body to do that naturally with no effort. Like for you to stay in Viparita, Viparita Karani, I'm actually going to come out of the pose again. And you can stay here as long as you need to. You can pause the video. You can do Shavasana, final relaxation, corpse pose in a Viparita Karani position. For those of you who'd like to come out of the pose, you can do that and find your Shavasana, similar to what we did at the beginning of the practice. Again, Find your blankets and pillows, maybe a pillow under the legs, a blanket across the pelvis, under the head. If you have an eye pillow, by all means use it. Just find that comfortable position. When I am in Shavasana, I like to do Supta Baddha Konasana, again, that reclined down angle, the butterfly, bringing the soles of the feet to touch allowing the knees to go wide, and I like to bring blocks in under the legs. So just find your comfortable Shavasana. Allow everything to settle. Observe the mind, the mental body. Observe the body, the physical body. Feel the spirit, the energy within the body, the soul. Feel the soul. Feel the peace that resides within the spirit, the soul. Knowing, understanding that that peace is always there. The peace is always there. Allow yourself to feel the breath. In its entirety, feel the breath moving through every space, every place in the body.
like for you to stay in Shavasana as long as you would like, whether that's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You can pause the video. And once you're ready to come out of Shavasana, roll through the favorite side, pausing for a moment, the head resting in the crook of the elbow. We cannot control everything. Sometimes we need to step back and let things unfold as they will. We can try to direct the outcomes of our actions, but at a certain point, we need to let play out what we have set in motion. We need to release a bit of control. Giving up control can actually be a relief. It is an admission that we are not only not the only force in the universe, and that in fact, we are one force in conversation with many other forces, from the forces of nature to the energy and interests of the people around us. For example, we cannot force a flower to open its petals and bloom. We must wait for it to open in its own time. Similarly, we cannot make a person agree with us. We can just present our thoughts and invite that person to consider them. In addition, when we respect nature's rhythms or listen to another person's ideas, we are given an opportunity to grow and learn. We are in a collaborative relationship with everything that exists. And we can try to give and receive within this collaboration. We'll all meet in a comfortable seat and bring the hands to heart center. Acknowledge you showed up. And think about what you'll take with you when you leave. Bring the hands to the center of the forehead in honor of mindful thought, to the lips in honor of mindful speech. And back down to heart center, always be mindful of love, kindness, compassion, and empathy for yourself first and then for all others. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be safe, May you live with ease. Let us bow to one another as we say, Namaste. Namaste, yogis. Thank you so much for joining me. First responders, thank you. Everyone, be safe. Take care of yourself. Love one another. Be kind to one another. And try in a weird way to enjoy this time, this pause that the universe has asked us to take. I love you all. Namaste.